Hello and welcome to part one of this video where we'll be looking at making a robot head from Super Sculpey. What you're looking at here is a sculpture that I made recently which is made out of clay but it's also made out of various found objects like lampshades and deodorant bottles. I thought it'd be fun to do another version of this because I really like the uh, paint scheme that's on the front of it. It's got this really nice chipped paint effect. Now this isn't an effect that I came up with myself, I, I got it from a tutorial on YouTube as well. Uh, but I thought it'd be nice to do a new version of this. I always thought it sort of had a slightly industrial, sort of uh, maybe even slightly Soviet look to it. So I thought it'd be quite nice to have another version of this, another head, uh, hanging in a sort of industrial landscape, perhaps being suspended by chains as though it were being repaired. So we're going to be going through how to sculpt this up, uh, materials needed, um, we're going to be looking at painting effects and also we'll be doing a little bit of uh, soldering so I figured I could get some uh, copper pipe to make the uh, industrial machinery that will be holding this in place. So there's quite a wide range of clays available but uh, the stuff I tend to use most is uh, this stuff which is uh, super sculpy. It's what's called a polymer clay um, and it's uh, obviously soft to sculpt with but you can uh, cook it in a normal domestic oven and it will go hard and that will be your finished piece. Here's a few sculptures that I'd done previously. Yeah, this is a bat dude, and uh, this is a uh, what I call the old droid, so sort of an old damaged android. And as you can see, you can get quite a nice realistic look to the uh, to the clay, especially once you've added a little bit of red paint to sort of give it a bit more life. One of the most important elements of any sculpture is the armature. That's the interior skeleton which goes inside the sculpture. They're typically made from wire. In this case, what I've done is to solder up a base which is made out of a copper disc and I've soldered some plumbing fittings onto there. And then on top of that, I've attached a further loop of copper and then wound wire around that to create the uh, basic shape of the head. I've done this in several stages. So I've done the initial shape uh, at first and then I've added additional layers of thinner wire to just fully cover the, um, the structure. This particular sculpture has a uh, plumbing fitting at the top so I can actually remove the head from the uh, stand once I'm done. This is because the final idea is going to be hung by a chains uh, from some sort of industrial framework. Uh, so I didn't want to have the uh, stand embedded in the sculpture so that I couldn't remove it. So the final, uh, the final step here is to cover the whole thing in a bit of tin foil um, just to stop the uh, clay going through the gaps in the armature. I'll actually be using tin foil to bulk out some of the sculpture here, so it won't all be made from Sculpey. Some of the thicker parts will have tin foil wrapped up and uh, embedded in the clay just to bulk it out a bit. Uh, this is because when you cook the Sculpey, it can have a tendency to crack if it's too thick. Um, so they recommend uh, bulking out the interior with uh, foil. So here you can see I've just blocked out the basic shapes of the uh, sculpture. Um, it's basically just blobs at the minute, but the idea is to get the sort of basic shape of the head in place. As you can see here, there's a particular angle that I try and get between the uh, lower face and the uh, the brow to the nose. Um, that's sort of showing up on the graphic there. I also try to get the eyes at equidistant um, from the base and the top of the head, so they should be sort of uh, exactly in the centre when you're looking at the uh, head in profile. So as you can see here, I'm uh, continuing to sculpt the uh, sculpture here and you can see on the left hand side that the heads are bolted out with foil there I've not yet covered that in clay and um, it's basically just a uh, process of constant refinement um, faces can be quite deceptive because you're you're so used to looking at human faces your brain can kind of deceive you um, it's actually quite useful to look at a sculpture um, either through a camera or in a mirror uh, this has the effect of sort of um, fooling your eye and uh, allowing you to uh, see the sculpture as a shape rather than as a face. Um, it's also useful to turn the sculpture upside down and look at it that way, that way your brain stops processing as a human face and actually lets you see where you've gone wrong, where uh, things might be misaligned or um, out of proportion. I tend to work on one side of the face first. Once I've got that right, I can then replicate that on the other side. So I've come to a point where I need to put some eyes in and as you can see I've got these glass eyes which are blank so the idea is you can um, 
painting your design yourself. Um, because this sculpture is going to be entirely painted, I don't really need glass eyes, so I'm not going to actually use these. Uh, but what I'm going to do is uh, create some copies. Um, so what I'm doing here is just uh, taking a piece of Super Sculpey and embedding the glass eye in it to create a, a basic mould. So it's prising it out of the clay there. So be a bit careful not to deform the mould as I do it. Uh, and there we go, that's a sort of a, a basic mould there. It doesn't matter if it deforms too much because it's going to be um, largely covered in sculpey. Obviously there will be an eyelid and all that sort of stuff over the, uh, over the eye, uh, eyeball that I'm going to cast up here. So it doesn't matter too much if it's not a precise um, hemisphere. I'm using this stuff which is a jesmonite resin which um, to be honest looks to me like just plaster with a bit of PVA glue in it. Um, I bought it ages ago, I'm only using it because um, it's been on the shelf for so long. Um, you could have just as easily use plaster here or uh, any other, any other um, sort of uh, material, perhaps uh, other types of resin uh, or plastics. But this stuff's easy to use, doesn't smell um, and it drives relatively quickly so I'm going to use this. So I'm just mixing it up into a paste here and I'm using a spatula to put it into the moulds. Just trying to avoid air bubbles here if I possibly can, so I'm just sort of making sure to uh, press into the mould to make sure there's no air bubbles clinging to the surface. So I just left these for a few hours and uh, now it looks like they're dry so I can pop those out. And there we go, there's our uh, basic eye shape. So just a quick test here, pulling out the uh, temporary eye that I'd had in there and uh, putting that in. It looks about the right right size. I tend to find that the smaller the eye you use, the sort of more mean your sculpture is going to look and the larger the eye you use, the more sort of friendly it looks. I think they tend to do that sort of thing with cartoon characters, so you generally find they have quite large eyes if they're a sort of a sympathetic, friendly character and smaller eyes if they're a more mean sort of character. So I'm just putting some Sculpey in there to help her uh, position the eye. As well as the eye sitting halfway between the top and bottom of the head when viewed from the side, it's also level with the edge of the mouth on either side when viewed from the front, as you can see demonstrated in the graphic there. So I'm just putting the lower lid in here, so just using a small sort of sausage pieces of clay there to sort of slowly build it up. Yeah, I've got quite an overhang under the eyelid there, so you can see I'm packing in a bit of tin foil to just uh, bulk it out. There's no sense using a uh, using Sculpey there, and um, you know this stuff isn't super expensive, but you know in the long run it does save you a bit of money. So just putting the uh, upper eyelid in there. There's a tendency to sort of make the uh, eyebrow and the eyelid sort of quite separate pieces, but if you actually look at some reference photos of people's eyes, you'll see that they actually blend together quite closely. I mean, there is a ridge above the eyelid, but it's not quite as extreme as I've got there, so I'm gonna try and uh, refine that down as I go. Just trying to give a, a hard edge to the uh, eyelid there. Um, in practice they tend to be a little bit more um, softer than I'm sort of doing here but I'm sort of keeping in the back of my mind that this is, isn't meant to be a real person, this is going to be a, a statue and it's going to have a sort of metallic look so I don't have to go for an entirely organic realistic look here, it can be a little bit more exaggerated, a little bit more angular if I want it to be. As you move into a time lapse here you'll actually see that I um, end up repositioning the eye a few times. Um, I realised I actually had it a little bit too low and this is something that ends up happening with sculptures a lot. I mean you'll see there that I actually pull out the cheek, pack a load of foil in and redo that. Um, it's just a question of constant refinement, looking at it from different angles, uh, making sure that everything seems to line up. Um, so here we are again and I've sort of reached a point where I'm sort of quite relatively happy with it here. Um, the cheekbones are quite defined and so is the jaw and the eyes look more or less positioned correctly. So I'm moving on to doing a little more detail work here and this tool is something I created myself. It's just a couple of pieces of guitar string uh, which have been set in epoxy and attached to an old paintbrush. It's quite useful for just uh, carving out very tiny uh, loops of uh, clay there and as you can see I'm initially using it to smooth down the, uh, the forehead. Then I'm going to start cutting in some wrinkle detail with it.
So here's the sculpture and um, what I'm doing here is just sort of trying to make sure that uh, it's actually symmetrical on both sides. Um, faces don't have to be entirely symmetrical. Um, I read somewhere that the more symmetrical a face is, the more attractive it is. I uh, don't know if that's necessarily true, but um, if you have it have too much difference, it does start looking a little bit weird. Um, I think this cheek perhaps needs a little bit added here, um, and possibly, possibly the mouth is a little bit crooked as well. I'd also uh, let's move this over. I think I'd also quite like to make the. Uh, the chin slightly wider here perhaps as well. So there we go, I've now widened the uh, chin slightly uh, here and here. Uh, I've also added a little bit to the, um, to the cheek here. And I mentioned earlier that it's uh, that faces can fool your eye quite easily. You know? So one trick is to actually turn them upside down so your brain sort of sees it more as a shape than a face. So if I do that now, um, so there it is uh, the right way up. And if I swing it around, how does that look? Okay, so it doesn't look too bad. I think I can see that this cheek here perhaps is a little wider here. Um, the rest of it doesn't look too bad. So right, I'm going to reduce that slightly. So in order to do that, I'm actually going to use this tool here, which um, already had a loop on it but I've added some wire wrapped around it to give it a uh, slightly more serrated edge. Um, this is sort of just a raking tool and basically uh, it's quite good for sort of evening up surfaces so you sort of rake it like that and although it gives it a bit of a uh, rough finish um, it drags the clay about and allows you to get a slightly more uh, flat or uniform level. Okay. So how does that look? Okay, not too bad. Um, there's probably still a bit of uh, unevenness to it, but I think it probably looks okay. So what I'm going to do now, so obviously I've got all that raked off and it's got quite a uh, quite a serrated uh, sort of uh, rough look to it. So I'm going to use uh, this, which is just a nice flat spatula tool to, uh, to flatten it all out again. So there's the sculpture uh, more or less smoothed out. Um, one other thing to say is never under underestimate the usefulness of your own finger uh, in smoothing stuff out. You know, you've got quite a uh, pliable uh, tool. So uh, there's the basic form of the face. Which uh, quite happy with, I think. So the next part we're going to look at adding mechanical detailing and also um, smoothing out even further. Well, thanks very much for watching. Uh, I'll be posting more videos on this project and others, so please do subscribe if you're interested in keeping up with what's going on. Uh, you can also find out more on my website, which is uh, www.thedarkpower.com, uh, or you can find me on Facebook, uh, just search for The Dark Power.